I know it's been a minute, um, but I really wanted to talk about this topic, especially since I've been a victim of everything that's been going on. So, if you haven't seen, um, Dr. Jackie from Married to Medicine is receiving a lot of backlash on some of her comments. If you haven't seen the video or the TikToks, the Instagrams, the Twitters, the Facebook posts on what um, Dr. Jackie said, this is actually not a laughing matter. Um, it's very serious. If you haven't seen the post on what Dr. Jackie said, um, here's the video. Sometimes as African-American women, we're a bit more dramatic in that you go to the doctor and you complain and you complain and you complain and you're not taken serious because you cried wolf the entire pregnancy. That ain't me, boo. I don't know what you're talking about, but go ahead. I didn't say you. I just said as as African American women, we want to also make sure you're being serious with your doctor and not playing the game so I can take you off work. Because then we see you 25 times in the pregnancy. It's hard to believe that there's a true problem when there's a true problem. Um, this really triggered me, obviously, because I'm making a video, but this really triggered me because, um, I will be sure to tag what I'm talking about, my videos, or you can scroll. I haven't really posted in a while because that's a whole nother topic for another day, which I will explain later, but just go ahead and scroll my, I believe not my last video, my, the two videos before my last video. Um, where I talk about uh, my cancer story. Dr. Jackie is also a cancer survivor, um, a breast cancer survivor. I'm a lymphoma survivor. But um, I talk about this a little bit in my video. I'm going to summarize why I'm triggered. Um, so going back to my cancer story, um, whenever, I first had, whenever I first started having symptoms, I told my mom first, of course, we went to the doctor and she didn't believe me. I was 22 at the time. Yes, I turned 23 in the hospital. Yeah, I was 22 at the time. I was graduated um, with my first uh, degree, my bachelor's degree. So I was already graduated. I was already a college student. Went to the hospital. I went to my doctor, told her my symptoms, that I'm scared. Something's wrong with me. I, I know my body. I know something's wrong with me. And she insinuated that I was making it up. She asked if I wanted to get out of school. I let her know that I was a graduate. I think I was about to graduate or I had just graduated at the time. It's been six years, so the memory is a little foggy. Plus, it was traumatic. And you know what our brain does when there's trauma. Um, but regardless, she thought I was making it up and pretty much brushed it off and told me not to worry about whatever it was I was going through and prescribed um, some very strong, a strong dose of ibuprofen. Um, me being 22, still very young, you know, you're taught to trust your doctor. I didn't really advocate for myself because, you know, tests and things were done. My symptoms didn't really scare her. I trusted her. She was, yeah, I trusted her, took the medication for a few months and thought, you know what, maybe I was exaggerating. It is important to note that she was not black. <laughs> she was not black um which brings me to my point of dr jackie um so fast forward took the ibuprofen months later the symptoms came back full force like ibuprofen was not working nothing was working i was extremely t like uh <laughs> It's crazy because it's been six years, but every time I tell this story, like that YouTube video I did, y'all, it took everything in me to talk about that and post that. And I'm really grateful for the comments and the encouraging words that I've been getting since posting it. But it, my symptoms came back full force. I couldn't even roll in my bed without sweating, without being tired. Everything was effortful. So my mom looked at me and was like, no, nah, we're going to the emergency room. Went to the emergency room, waited hours, finally got in there. Mind you, I'm crying. I'm, my mom's having to like pick me up and like it's evident that I am sick. Something's wrong with me. Mind you, when I was at the hospital, luckily there was really nobody else in the waiting room. Maybe one other person, but there was nobody else in the waiting room and I still had to wait hours. 
Um, wait hours for my results. My nurses were not black. When I got the news, again, if you watch my uh, full testimony, you'll see that the nurse was like, you're pretty much gonna die. <laughs> you have a 10 centimeter tumor in between your heart and your lung. Um, they misdiagnosed me initially. Like I said, my doctor, when I went the first time earlier in the year, she didn't think anything of it, thought it was anxiety, thought I was exaggerating, gave me medicine. Later down the line, it turned out to be cancer at 22 years old. Um, so, Dr. Jackie, um, her comments were very insensitive, very insensitive, especially knowing what black women are going through. Black women are three times more likely to die giving birth, okay? We are not believed, I don't know why. <laughs> like, if I have so many stories of my cancer journey where I, I could have, oh my God. On the other coin, I did have exceptional care from some nurses and some doctors. My lung doctor, till this day, Dr. Kasal, shout out to you. Like, he's not black either, but I so much appreciate him. My pain doctor, he was black, Nigerian. He used to come in my room and chop it up with me. Like, not every doctor, not every black doctor is Dr. Jackie. And not every doctor is as bad as my first doctor who misdiagnosed me. You know, that's I'm a huge advocator for go who is for you. Go who's best for you. Advocate for yourself. I learned that a lot. Um, but yeah, going back to Dr. Jackie, her comments were very insensitive, hurtful. Um, because even if black women exaggerate, even if pregnant, like, like, let me not even, let me take the black out of it. Even if women are exaggerating during pregnancy, during childbirth, so what? That is bringing a life, a human life into this world. Do you know, like, allow women to exaggerate. I've never been pregnant. I don't have kids yet. Um, but my periods, God, my periods bring me to my knees, okay? My cramps bring me to my knees. So I can only imagine how, how painful, how painful childbirth being pregnant is. My sister, who gave birth to my lovely, lovely, lovely nephew, I was with her during her pregnancy journey and it's not easy. It's not easy at all. My mom, I'm 10 years, 11 years older than my last, uh, the last born in my family. I remember my mom being pregnant. She was throwing up up until my sister lost weight her first trimester. Like, it's not easy. I see a lot of women um, throwing jabs at Dr. Jackie, bringing up her infertility due to the breast cancer. And I don't think that's fair. Um, some people are saying she's bitter. And I can agree that maybe she isn't as empathetic um, because she hasn't been through that journey but to poke fun of her infertility um from breast cancer is just not fair and i don't agree with that i may be biased because i have been through cancer and i wouldn't wish that on anyone it was a very very hard thing to go through especially at a young age um but i can agree that her comments were very um just very very wrong very very wrong um there are a lot of talks saying that she should get her license revoked Again, I don't know, I don't agree with that stance, being that I am a doctorate degree holder, yeah. Um, I know <laughs> some of the people, all 200 of y'all that pay attention to me, <laughs> know that I graduated recently. Um, I got my doctorate in physical therapy and that was hard, okay? School is hard. Anyone going through school anyone putting their lot like just it, yeah their lives you know it's it's years taken away from your lives to dedicate to giving service to the country to the to their patients to people um it was a very hard process um i don't think she's just i mean i haven't watched married to medicine in years to be honest i never really cared for her she was very monotone and boring to me so never really cared for her on the show but when i did watch it um she wasn't my favorite, but I don't, from 
what I've seen and what I've gathered, I don't think she's a horrible person. What she said was horrible. I don't think her license should be revoked because that is something that is hard to get. Now, if it comes out that, you know, she mismanaged or she was the reason of, you know, the mortality rate, that's a whole nother thing. Her comments were just very insensitive and I don't think that's enough for her license to be taken. Um, again, I might be biased because I am a healthcare professional, but again, that's just me. Also, her, I saw clips where she, um, I think her name is Buffy, where she was at a party and she pretty much told a room full of people about Buffy. I, I don't know if Buffy was her patient, her friend, but she told a room full of people about her friend's infertility. If you haven't seen it, let me just put the clip here. And Buffy, you can relate. You're infertile. Yeah, I'm infertile. Yeah, I'm infertile. For real? You just told all these people that she infertile. Did they just have a conversation and, and Jackie, she gave you the okay to tell the whole damn room? Yeah, that was wild. Again, I experienced this in my journey. Um... I don't think I talked about it in my testimony video, so I'll be quick because I do have somewhere to go, obviously. But <laughs> um, the first hospital I was admitted to, um, I was there for a little bit. I was there, I want to say for about a month, um, being taken care, being taken care of. Now, I had very few family visit me. Not even my best friends knew how sick I was. They knew I was sick, but they didn't know I was in the hospital until later. Um, so I think like my closest cousins and aunts and uncles were coming to visit me, pray for me, give me, um, you know, just care. And they didn't know how sick I was because it was just a regular hospital. Um, even my ex at the time, he knew I was sick cause I was in the hospital, but he didn't know what I was diagnosed with. Um, so fast forward, my symptoms weren't getting better. Um, to the point where at rest my heart rate was 136. I suddenly had a fever of 105. They got ice baths. They were soaking me in ice to cool me down. That's how bad it was. And the last thing I remember is me passing out, waking up in another hospital. Um, so the other hospital, apparently I was flown out. Like they had to transport me. The first hospital I was at pretty much told my family there was nothing they can do for me. So they transported me to MD Anderson. And for those that aren't from Houston or in, are or are not in the oncology field, MD Anderson is a top cancer hospital. They specialize in cancer. So they shipped me to MD Anderson. And so I had family that would still try to visit the old hospital and ask where I was, that they can't get a hold of me or my family. Y'all, why the nurses tell them they didn't that I was pretty much dying of cancer, so they had to take me to MD Anderson. <laughs> what happened to HIPAA? If I wanted them to know, they would have known. It was very embarrassing because when I came back, um, when I woke up from my coma, I had a why didn't you? I had a lot of why didn't you tell me cancer like. And the, like, pretty much the reason why I didn't want to tell fa friends and family was the reason, like, it just confirmed why I should have, like, why they shouldn't have known. Like, their fear kind of crept onto me. Them not knowing and them caring for me was actually doing me a lot more good than they know. I did, I was already getting a lot of bad news from the doctors and the nurses. So being around family that were happy and like, oh, girl, you're going to get over this was very 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 um helpful so when they knew the seriousness of my illness i could feel the fear i could feel the sorrow the sadness and it just wasn't helpful for me now um dr jackie exposing her friend's business like that <laughs> again i don't oh i don't know that right there is very effed up. That right there to me is very effed up. Like, 
and you could just see it on her face. Like, honestly, I felt like they probably had to add the background music because you could hear a pen fall. Like, the amount of faces, the, the reactions that were given after she said that, oh my goodness, I couldn't imagine being in that room. I don't know what I would have done, what I would have said. Cringe. Um, again, coming from a doctor with experience, years, I want to say decades of experience, that's rookie stuff. Like, do I think that warrants getting her license revoked again? No, I don't. Should she get a write-up? Should she be reprimanded? Yes. Maybe even being kicked off the show? Yes. License revoked? I'm not there yet. I don't think... I'm not there yet. Change my mind in the comments, though. Um, I would really, 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 really want to know everyone's opinion on this. Um, again, I'm all for helping black women. If uh, I've had black patients... Black women specifically ask me for a doctor's note. I don't give, like, if you says your foot is hurting, patient's foot is hurting. She needs a day off. Your arm, your eye, your ear, I'm writing that doctor's note. Come on now. We work so hard. We work so hard. We work so hard. Why can't we get a break? And not to pin women against women, but white women, when they're pregnant, have you been around white women when they're pregnant? The whole world stops. Everybody on mute. <laughs> no, but like, seriously, the whole world stops. Oh, can you cover for her? She, She's not feeling well. She's been bombing as soon as she got here. Oh, we're going to allow her to sit down for, you know, even though she she's only a week pregnant, we're going to allow her to sit down for the rest of the year. Like it, and the whole world stops when white women are pregnant. As a, from my perspective, from what I've seen, from what I've been around. So I just don't understand why can't we be given the same grace? Like, come on now. Like, I just don't, I don't understand it. Again, I want to hear y'all's opinions. I want to hear what y'all think in the comments. Um, yeah, I'll see y'all in the next video. I'm. I'm back, y'all. I'm back. I had a few of y'all check on me. Again, I really, really, really appreciate it. Like, I only have 2,000 subscribers. So, to see that y'all care is really, 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 man, I don't even know what to put it. I can't put it into words. I'm just grateful. Um, let me know what other videos y'all want to see from me. Um, but, yeah, I love y'all. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Can we get it together? I got options, and I don't wanna tell you to drop it.